Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, hi everybody, and thank you very much for attending my talk. I'll be speaking today about how to teach models, help us perhaps make some decisions on interior design questions. And first, yeah, maybe a few more words about myself. So, uh, I work as a data scientist at Tuplux. This is a Poland-based company in Europe. And I was born in Lithuania, which is actually even a smaller country in Europe. And it is mainly known for basketball and sadly not much else. And I have a background in mathematics, now doing my PhD in machine learning. And also as mentioned in my free time, I work as a concert photographer. And those two things, mathematics and photography, led me to computer vision and machine learning. So first of all, how do we perform search in interior design? And what is the problem here? So I don't know how about you, but I don't usually buy any stylish uh, designer furnitures. And even if I did, I would have no idea what other furnitures to put that with, any tables or sofas, or how could I design my room so that everything looks nice and fancy and stylish. So the question here is really not to find items that are similar visually. So let's say find items that are in the same color, on the same shape. But we also want to find items that share some stylistical similarities. And sometimes we also want to extend our query with textual input. So let's say we have bought this uh, marble gold table, or we got it as a gift because we would never buy such thing. And then we are looking for a chair. So we have a text query chair. Or maybe a friend of ours really like the table, and he wants to buy a similar one, but in different color. So then he wants to add a text query, which is describing a different color. Uh, and this problem is actually kind of difficult, because if we applied a regular visual search to the image, which we, let's say, found in the catalog, then the similar, uh, simple visual search engine, such as Google Images, would yield us with different pictures, also with living rooms, also there are some sofas, dining table, uh, maybe they have some color scheme that is similar to ours, so we could not argue that those images are not similar to our query image, but sometimes this is just not what we are looking for. So how to make the engine find items Let's find this particular item, which is this table, and not look for the items in the background, and also to find uh, other items with the same style. In real life, how is this style search actually applied? Should we, should we do that? Should we, should we waste our time doing this? And especially for fashion, this is done already quite a lot. So such e-commerce giants as ASOS or Zalando are applying visual search by allowing users to snap outfits on the street uh, to upload any custom images to find similar items in their database of clothing items. So this is, for example, done at ASOS or Zalando. And also, uh, for interior design, I am not aware of any bigger solutions, but for example, Pinterest is using visual search a lot and it's using for all kinds of items. Actually, this is the Pinterest lenses, which was introduced, I don't know, like, uh, last year, and it was introduced only in States, so I'm not sure how it worked. Did it work well? It's, uh, you know better, definitely. And, um, and yeah, so how do we do this style search? So what we've developed as an internal app is, uh, is allowing you to choose designs uh, from a catalog of images and then to find the, this exact item similar on the picture or different similar items in the database or just matching items which are from different categories as well as just to snap a picture and then find that particular item in our database. So actually, this is not a huge database. This, is, this was collected from IKEA website. And a short disclaimer here, uh, 
Uh, we uh, IKEA didn't pay us a dime for that, so <laughs> so yeah. If anybody of you is working for IKEA, we can discuss later. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is only 2,000 images, and the idea behind our model is if we cannot define style similarity, as this is a very subjective measure, we could not ask many people, well, even if we ask a lot of laborers to say if two items are of the same style or not, then we would definitely get a lot of problems that this is subjective. So a lot of people would have different opinions on whether those two items are similar or not. And we would have to collect a lot, a lot of data to be able to normalize. So yes, indeed, we need some measure that could allow us to say whether two items are similar or not. And one of the ideas that we followed is that we could use context. So if we had this picture from Catalog magazine, well, this one is from IKEA website, but they also have some inspirations there. And we just assume that this is nicely designed room. So why not go one step further and assume that all those objects that are present in the picture, they at least have a high probability of sharing the same stylistical, uh, stylistical properties. Uh, so what we did, we collected three types of data from their website. Uh, one of them was room images, so those nicely styled some room pictures. But also we needed catalog photos of those of the same objects present on white background, nicely lit, uh, with some descriptions available to them. And as a first step in our style search engine, we applied object detection. Because, uh, of course, when a user snaps a photo, or uh, it has a lot of background, which we don't really need. So what we want is to be able to extract some regions of interest, to be able to find different kinds of objects present on that, so that without any prior information on what kind of object it is, without any tags, so that it is a sofa, chair, dining table, we are, be to, we are able to automatically determine what kind of objects there are, and then later on only use to those parts of the image that are responsible so, for those objects. And to do object detection, we actually tested a few frameworks. The first one has this cool name, YOLO 9000, which stands for You Only Look Once. And this is a nice framework, which is very fast. It assumes that, so it does end-to-end -end training and prediction. At the same time, it gives you bounding boxes with confidence level for, for object present in this grid element. And at the same time, it predicts class probability. So it's not doing it two-step wise. So it's not, as in usual, object detection manner, doing first region proposals, then predicting cl different classes for those bounding boxes. But it's doing two tasks at the same time. And in the end, it presents you with a set of final detections. Uh, the network itself, the architecture, uh, com is comprised of 19 convolutional, neural, uh, convolutional blocks. And it was written in C. That's why it's very fast to use uh, when compared to different models. A year ago, I'm not sure about right now, but a year ago, it, was, uh, it re surpassed the state of the art. Uh, it changes a lot, so I'm not sure which object detection framework is state of the right, right, right now. Uh, but to be able to, do, to use it in our Python framework, we actually had to uh, do a simple Python wrapper. So this is just a nice example that is very easily done with C types. Uh, we just needed kinds of arguments, uh, type of result, and then we were able to wrap an example function here. So we wrapped a bunch of functions from their framework. And then we were able to use it in our object detection. Also, we tested a different object detection framework, which was released later, later this year. Uh, Google TensorFlow actually released their API for object detection. And it had a lot of pre-trained models that are actually very easy to use. They work out of the box. They are pre-trained on Coca data set, so the data set which already has more than 80 categories of different object classes. And it is also quite easy to fine tune it on your own data set. 
Uh, so from the available models, we tested a few, and in the end, we've chosen faster RCNN. This is also end-to-end -end object detection framework. And it first proposes, uh, it generates region proposals. Uh, and then uh, by pulling regions of interest, it, uh, it does the final classifier. And uh, after we've done the first step of ob detecting different objects and determining the kind of class uh, the object is, we do visual search. So here we actually follow the standard procedure, which is to extract visual features from a pre-trained convolutional neural network. So this is a very popular way of doing transfer learning. We take, we take a network which was learned to classify objects to different classes like cat, dog, airplane, chair, and then, as we are not interested in classifying this picture, but only to be able to generate some vector in uh, n-dimensional space, we are taking the, the second to last layer of this uh, pre-trained network, and we say that, okay, this is the representation of our item, and we do this for all the objects in the database. So we generate the vectors, and we have uh, n-dimensional space of those vectors, and every object is present somewhere in this space, so that at the query time, when we have a new picture, we can map it also in the same way with the, uh, with the same pre-trained neural network to get its vector representation, and then by finding its nearest neighbors, we are able, in a very simple way, to find similar vectors. Here we tested several architectures, uh, to compare the results of uh, mean recall. And as it turns out, ResNet, it's ResNet 50 actually, uh, surpassed the other methods of VGG 16 or VGG 19. And as expected, adding uh, object detection step improved the, the recall a lot. So this re these results are for recall of the exact object that was present in the room. So as a query, we get uh, let's say, a chair present here that was, uh, uh, that was taken as a picture. And as a result, we say that this is the picture of this chair, but in a catalog on white background. And for extracting visual features, uh, we, um, we used Keras, and, and it is also quite easily done. Uh, out of the box, you can, you can apply a ResNet50 model, which was portrayed on ImageNet. And you can even add a parameter for uh, non including the top layer. After we've extracted all the visual features, we wanted, of course, to test whether this approach is working on our data set. And to this end, we visualized this n dimensional space. In Resonant, it's two dimensional space, so all the image vectors are 2000 two dimension, uh, two dimensional. And we map them using TSNI just to two dimensions to be able to check whether similar items are indeed appearing close together. And it turned out that, yes, as expected, some shapes are preserved as well as colors are preserved, items that, uh, that share some patterns or some colors or some textures are, tend to really appear together. Um, then, as the second step, we decided to add text element to our search engine. As described before, we wanted to be able to search for things multimodally, so not only with images, but with text as well. And for text, the standard approach is actually using word to vec and training it on descriptions. That was the most straightforward way of using that. Uh, but, be, but apart from uh, training word to vec on product descriptions, we also train it on contexts. So here, we assumed, as in regular word to vec you have words that appear in sentences. Here we assumed, so okay, we have rooms, rooms are sentences, and furniture objects are our words. So as some words are appearing more frequently, some words are less frequent, we did the same with the different furniture appearing in different rooms. After training this model, we also wanted to be able to validate it. And uh, here we also applied a TSNI dimensionality reduction to visualize the, the resulting space 
of furniture to VEC. And we noticed that without training it, that, with, that after training it without any textual information, it tended to catch some classes quite well. So rooms from the same categories, such as baby room or uh, kitchen, tended to really cluster together, whereas uh, dining room or living room, they were really mixed out. So that was as expected. So to summarize this, the first framework that we used, it worked that first, when given a room scene image, it produces different detected objects on that image. And then for every detected object, it gets a set of visually similar results. On the other hand, when given a text query, it produces closest furniture description vectors and closest furniture embedding vectors. Then we blend the results to be able to produce a final set of the uh, stylistically similar results. So here we tried several branding approaches. One of them was just to take a top K result from each of the modality. And um, the second approach was to use feature sim visual feature similarity blending. So after getting a set of initial results from each of the modes, we uh, re-ranked them based on visual similarity to the query. And uh, then getting all the results in the end. And now is the difficult step, because how can we evaluate? The, how can we evaluate if our model is actually working fine, whether one blending method is working better than the other? Uh, for this, we didn't want to try the human labelers, as said before, so we actually uh, kind of created our similarity metric. Uh, well, there is a math formula, but this is actually nothing really fancy. This is just an empirical probability of two items belonging together in the same room, which is normalized by the maximum amount of times each of the items appeared in the rooms overall. So after using this metric, uh, we were able to compute the similarity results for some example text queries, and it turned out that feature similarity blending worked the best. So this is the one that re-ranked the results uh, with visual similarity to the query. Uh, after having the initial results, we thought, okay, this is cool. We have some blending method uh, which works on textual and image results. There are some initial results, but could we create a framework that would learn end-to-end, -end so that it would learn a general presentation of image and text at the same time? For this, we turned to literature, because, of course, we didn't want to invent a wheel, and the most general approach to creating a multimodal embedding is to train a Siamese network with image, net, image branch and text branch. So this is an example which was done for fashion product retrieval. And the way that authors created the multimodal space was to use contrastive loss by generating positive and negative pairs. So here, a positive pair is image of some clothing item and a corresponding text description to that item. On the other hand, we have a negative pair, which is the same image, but with a non-corresponding textual description. So the way that Siamese network works with contrastive loss is we try to maximize the distance between non-corresponding vectors and to minimize the distance between corresponding vectors. Uh, so here what is used uh, also word to vector processing on the input text to create a 500-dimensional word-to-vec descriptor, while, while image is also pre-processed through a pre-trained neural network, it's AlexNet in this case, to get an image descriptor. What is done additionally is classification is applied to each of the branches so that some semantic information is preserved. So we don't only want to have similar items from the same image and text description to be close together, but we also want to both those networks to learn that, okay, this is a skirt, this is a shirt, uh, as in the example of, the, of this paper authors have done for the fashion. However, this is, th we tried this uh, by adding the 
image descriptor and text descriptor, but the results were not very promising. Perhaps the reason for that was that this network uh, was, burnt, uh, was built uh, in purpose to retrieve images when given text and to retrieve text when given images. And we wanted to do something quite different. We wanted to retrieve items that with both image and text. Uh, the other the other model which we which we kind of analyzed was unifying visual semantic embeddings, and this model was used to generate captions for given images. So this is also a kind of popular topic right now in machine learning, uh, visual question answering, generating captions for images, uh, or answering questions about images. So. Here, what we, uh, so here the authors propose CNN LSTM encoder and CSNLM decoder. And we're actually only interested in the first part where they create a multimodal space because they, uh, they claimed to preserve semantic, uh, semantic regularities. So what this means is that some relationships happen between the vectors. So if we take a vector of a car, of a white car, and we add a vector for black, then, as a result, they said that they would get a black car. And we tried this, and the results were actually kind of promising, because uh, um, when we trained the model on our small IKEA data set, which was composed of only a few thousand pictures, uh, so we actually fine-tuned this. We kept some layers frozen, and it turned out that when given a picture of table and a text query glass, it produced some tables with glass elements. And the second is actually kind of interesting because when given a picture of a chair it, and a text query white table, it actually produced some weird table-ish uh, furniture with wheels. So it actually realized that there are some wheels in this picture. Uh, so yeah, uh, as a final slide, there is a short demo from our web app uh, where users can just uh, get a design from the gallery and then find matching items, similar items, as well as items from different categories that will be matching them. Uh, so yeah, this will be it. And now it's your turn. <laughs> Does it, okay, we have quite time for questions. Oh, well, shucks, okay. Uh, that's a great presentation. I had a question about the results that you get. Does it produce a probability, you know, like the, the percentage of matching uh, qualities when you get the results? You know, you get six tables there. Can it sort by, oh, you know, I think this is 95% accurate, whereas the sixth table is, you know, eh, this like fits 50% of the qualities of a, you know, white table or something. Uh, okay, so yeah, we actually didn't, uh, didn't give a metric for that, so we didn't analyze that, we just ranked the results. So what we, did, what we did was more like median rank, so we analyzed like uh, if there is a similar item which is it when, ra when it is presented in the ranked results. But yeah, we, we could do that, of course, as well. Just wondering for the API, are you guys using uh, TensorFlow serving or uh, just curious as to how uh, you're using the model live? Uh, so uh, we are just building our models in TensorFlow in Keras, yeah, in Keras mainly. And as I said, like when we, when we used Yolo, we had to wrap it up. But as we are using TensorFlow and Keras for feature extraction, then we decided to go with the, this object detection. But yeah, we were just uh, training our models on top of that. Yeah, so the question was, is it published on GitHub? Uh, so yeah, it is. Uh, I didn't include the link, so you can email me and yeah, I'll, I'll write you back. Do you categorize them like modern, 
bell of hook or that that kind of categories too when you're looking at them yeah so that's that actually would be one of the goals like to be able to when presented let's say with a picture of a table to be able to add uh, adjective like vintage or modern and to retrieve the results that would be like matching this image and the text query so this is the final goal that we are trying to achieve and then what do you do with like specific period furnitures that have a name like Chippendale or Tiffany's or stuff like that? Like how do you approach that when you're putting that in there? So right now we didn't approach that yet. So it really depends on the database. So to build, uh, so build, to build our prototype, we didn't have enough of data mm -hmm. to be able to test that. We also tried on fashion, but on fashion, yeah, that's a different topic. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? Oh, sorry. Uh, I just had a question around maybe an alternative approach and just curious if you tried that kind of around with what she was just asking where like you might have trouble labeling things, you know, modern or vintage, but if you had a picture that was considered modern and you start matching against it, I would think that there would be something there. So my question is, um, have you looked into sort of generating just modern pictures or anything with like a generative adversarial net and then using those somewhere in the pipeline? Uh, yeah, so actually that was also one of the ideas which is also popular in fashion. So a lot of the things in interior design come from fashion because there is a lot more research. And this is a very interesting approach that we thought about doing as well, but we didn't have the time to approach that. So as you say, it would be, yeah, if we have like, if we had some pictures that, could, that were labeled as modern, and then we could generate different kind of objects from that, we could find for, look for similar ones. Yeah, thanks. More questions? I have one more. What do you do with pieces of furniture that are multi-use that can change from like a table to a chair? Like, how do you approach <laughs> that? Because we're talking IKEA here, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, fortunately or no, the data set that we scrapped didn't have those. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, actually, for the labeling of the categories, so that later when we retrieved items from specific categories we used the descriptions that are available on their website. So they have actually labeled a table chair as table or chair. So it, it depends on that. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Anybody else? Any final questions? Thanks so much, Ivana. Thanks for Thank you. Thank you.